Next on Sprague Wood Turning, we take a small jagged bowl and turn it into a big round one. Hopefully. Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. In this week's video, we take a strange looking piece of maple burl and combine it with some burgundy resin and make a really awesome looking bowl. So first things first, this thing uh, has been sitting around in my drying shed for seven years. It was done in, in 2015, roughed out. And you know, it's such an odd shape that it kind of just got left in my drying shed and I didn't really know what to do with it. And this was before um, I was doing resin. So now that I'm doing resin, I've got a plan for this piece. So it was covered in anchor seal. First thing I did there was strip all that anchor seal off with 60 grit. Now I'm removing the bark with uh, just a flat tip screwdriver. I mean, you can use whatever you want. You can use a chisel if you want. I do find that chisels tend to dig in. So that's why I prefer to use just a flat tip screwdriver. And of course, brass brush to clean up all those little areas. And, you know, you just kind of work with the, the brass brush and picking stuff out as you're doing it. Um, I think my battery probably died there. So I, I think that my battery dies twice here. Um, so anyway, it's just, it's a really odd piece of wood. And yeah, you know, I could have finished it as it sat, but I just, ah, you know what, it needs something more. Uh, especially, I mean, you're looking at it there. It's just, it's really strange. <laughs> So here I'm using a sanding mop just to get the rest of the little bits out that I couldn't get with the brush and to give everything a good solid tooth for the resin to stick to. I decided to grind the tenon off this because I'm going to be sandwiching this between two plastic bowls. So that would have um, had, had a big area where resin would have sat, so I didn't see the point of doing that because the intention is to put a glue block on the bottom of this before we uh, finish turn it. There you go. It, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just needs to work. So I had some lifting issues on um, a video we did a couple of weeks ago with the Amazon Green. So here I'm just trying to make sure that we don't have any more of those issues. Uh, so duct tape and a big heavy rock and you know that pretty much kept everything in place and kept it where I want it to stay. We are using deep casting epoxy from designer epoxy this week again. Now this is a new formula. Like all good companies designer epoxy is always developing uh, new products and or, or trying to improve upon the products that they have and the new formula is actually a lot thinner than the old formula for the deep cast. Uh, this was really the first time that I used it. And when I stuck the mixer in and hit the trigger, it actually kind of flew out of the cup, which in the past would never do. But that kind of shows you how much thinner the epoxy is. So that's good because it will allow more bubbles to escape before the epoxy sets up and it will flow better into areas. Um, that it ordinarily wouldn't go into. The other really huge benefit that I can see from this, if you're a wood turner and you don't use a pressure pot, this should allow um, all those little cracks you're trying to fill uh, for, the, for the epoxy to weep into it and um, allow more bubbles, more bubbles to escape as well. So I really see this as a benefit to wood turners that don't use a pressure pot like I do. But if you use a pressure pot, hey, it's probably even gonna be better. So <laughs> while I was talking, we mixed some black and we mixed some pearl red and to make a burgundy. Um, this is probably the first bowl that I've done since I kind of played around with that color uh, in an earlier video. So I was really looking forward to um, to this this color because it's a really kind of deep, rich color. All right. So if you're curious, that's about 60 ounces, somewhere around there. So this will go into the pressure pot for three days and then we'll see you guys when it comes out. Till then, see you later. Well, that was an easy removal. Sorry to disappoint because I know that some 
<laughs> Some like to watch me struggle to get these out. Uh, no mold release with that either. This is a Cutzall sanding disc. It actually works really, really well. I used to use a ton of uh, little flap sander discs. And uh, since I got this, I haven't bought another one. And I've probably had this now for probably two years. It does a great job grinding away any of that epoxy. Here I am. I'm, I'm trying. I've got... I want to try and drill a hole through the center of this and line this up perfectly. So I'm just trying to get a flat spot so that I can actually do what I'm doing here. And put a glue block on there with a the drill bit shoved down through the glue block and into the base of the bowl where I drilled a hole where I figured center was. All right, so we've got a problem. <laughs> Uh, so much for the drill bit method because that is way off and I'm worried about her overall thickness. So I'm going to have to cut this off and put this on cold jaws, probably what I should have done the first time. And then hopefully the glue block will be centered properly. Blue block take two. So now the bowl is mounted on the coal jaws. I've actually only got four little uh, rubber coal jaws holding this right now. So I'm taking it pretty gingerly. Um, just too lazy to put all eight on. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's, that's kind of where I was at. And then just use some 60 grit to um, give it a good tooth to grab onto. Well, it's not perfect, but uh, certainly a lot better than it was. Let's get it trued up here and get a look at it. I'm really curious. Here I'm using the Hercules, and I pretty much use the Hercules throughout this video to, uh, to do this bowl. Uh, yeah, like I said, trying to just true things up. Very, very curious to see how this is going to look between those... Um, it, I, I'm kind of going for an island effect. That's why I want it to resin well above the edges of it. And uh, in the end piece, I think that I pretty much achieved that. But that's kind of what I was going for. So the goal here right now is just to get this trued up and to get rid of any resin blobs that might be sitting on top of the wood. And then we can make some final adjustments from there. So as far as hearing protection is concerned and working on the lathe, I typically, most of the time, only wear hearing protection when I'm sanding. Uh, you know, if you think about it, you're sanding all day. Um, you can certainly damage your hearing. With normal wood pieces, it's not really very loud. But I do find with these resin pieces that it can be quite loud. So you might want to consider wearing hearing protection the whole time that you're actually turning wood and resin combos. And there's our first kind of real look. Still a big resin blob on that one wing, and that, that one there as well. But, you know, a little ways to go and then we'll have it. So far, switching to this video format has, I've seen, it's been pretty positive in the comments. Every now and then there's, there's the odd comment that, you know, they wish that they could hear the, the noises of the lathe. But, you know, I, I, I just turned, I, on this one clip, I turned it on to see if what we could hear. And it's just nothing but high pitch whistling. And that, of course, is from the dust collector, which I really like to run, especially in my shop when it's closed up in the wintertime like it is now.
So one of the knocks on my hot milk glue method that I like to use here, if you noticed, when I get out near the rim of that bowl, so the further you get away from center, of course, the more mechanical advantage you have and the more vibration you're going to get. So if this bowl is mounted in a chuck, then I think a lot of that vibration may not be present. But because it's on a glue block, you might get some chatter and vibration out at the edge of the wall. As you can see, we had a little ways to go yet. Uh, when I put that burl into the bowl, the upper part wasn't touching the inside of the bowl. So that's why it's tilted in just a little bit. There you can see it at the top. So just whittle that down. And in the previous uh, clip, um, that's just so the two, I've got the tool handle down and the shaft of the tool is at 45 degrees on the tool rest and just light sweeping cuts back and forth, back and forth. And you know, that will give you a really good surface, uh, going into sanding. Uh, I could, I always start at 60, but you know, a lot of times after I've done these bowls, I probably could have started at sanding at 120. I don't know if I would start sanding at 180, but certainly maybe 120. I am a bit of a creature of habit, so you know I know that in the past that has worked for me. So when things work for me, I typically stick to it. Not always, because uh, you know just because I do this this way doesn't mean it's the best way. There's there's plenty of other ways out there that for people to turn bowls and make bowls, and this is just the way that I do it. So I just trued up the rim. Uh, I probably, it had a kind of a sharp ring around it. I should have uh, sanded that off before I even start it. Because if, if your hand happens to touch it, <laughs> you're probably going to get sliced open pretty good. So you should, be, you should remove those casting marks uh, so that, you know, you don't have an accident. So the underside of the smaller bowl is concave. So um, it has a habit of leaving a little kind of a pool of resin on the center of the bowl. Usually that's okay because I've got some some cracks that I want to be filled, that I want filled down in that area anyway. But in this case, they're actually, it was a pretty clean casting other than the fact it was just shaped really, really strange. Uh, again, measuring wall thickness, always, always important. Again, this is another real-time clip, and I am cutting above center. And again, the Hercules is probably, yeah, it's probably at 45, maybe not 100% 45. And the tool handle is just down slightly. And I do find that this will give you a really, really clean cut on the inside of the bowl, working in the belly area, which is typically uh, one of the harder areas to get right. So just trying to sit, take some last few little finishing cuts before moving on to sanding. 
Uh, you know, I'm no different than everybody else. That area right there at the center of the bowl, uh, because the surface speed is going a lot slower than uh, the outside surface speed of the bowl, it's tough to get in there and, and get kind of uh, tool mark free prior to sanding. But I did a pretty decent job there. All right, so um, again, this drill, the reason why I use this drill is because it goes 2400 RPM. So spin your lathe at 1200 if you can. That's not always possible. And the drill at, on full at 2400 RPM and you'll get a really clean surface. Now on the back side of the bowl, if you look at the way I've got the drill tucked into my body, that takes the, the strain off of your off your elbows and wrists. Well, maybe not so, so much your wrists, but it certainly takes the strain off your arms. So I like to tuck that drill in into my body and then just kind of sway across the surface of the bowl. Buffing time, I should mention that we sand it from 60 to 800, and now I'm using Triple E buffing compound just to buff out the resin before the first coat of finish goes on the bowl. And like always, cleaning up with denatured alcohol. And there you can see kind of the residue that comes off. All right, it is the best part. First coat of finish. This is Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. Ooh. Make sure you get the lint off your rags. All right, here you go. It is certainly a deeper burgundy than I thought it would be. Again, there's a dark ring, which I'm assuming is more of the black at the top. Have no idea. That was all done in one pour. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, next time I do the burgundy, I probably won't put as much black in it as I did this time. Kind of reminds me of an island on a foreign planet, somewhere surrounded by burgundy water. Oh look, there's William Shatner. <laughs> All right, anyway, we'll, oh, we'll do the second coat tomorrow. Same procedure before uh, the first coat finish, buffing with the Triple E, cleaning with the denatured alcohol prior to the second coat of finish going on. Well, good morning. This is the second coat of Waterlux. And the first coat covered so well that I'm thinking that it might only take two. So I typically don't move the camera when I'm doing the finishes. Um, so I thought that I would just leave it on the back side of the bowl because um, you guys typically don't ever see me uh, finish the back side of the bowl. So that's why I kind of left the camera there. Well, this is certainly a different view. Looks pretty nice. Yep, it's looking more and more like we're just going to have to do the two coats. Fantastic looking stuff. Right, well, we'll see you when we're doing the foot. So this is pretty much the way that I always do all the bottoms on my bowls. I use a parting tool to cut it free from the glue block and just finish the rest of it off with a handsaw. Then mount the piece on a vacuum chuck that you see there. And this piece was sanded. Um, I probably could have started at 180 um, for sure on the bottom of these. And sometimes I actually do. Uh, but um, I think I started at 60 and went all the way through to 600, I think is what I did. Very little bit of, only a little bit of resin on the very bottom. So not real crucial.
All right, let's have a last look at this beauty bowl. Two coats of Waterlux. Um, when I did the very bottom and I put the coat of finish on the very bottom, I noticed that there's some marks in the rim for where it was sitting upside down on my drying rack. So I was going to put a third coat on anyway. Down here in the wood, I'm not real happy with the way that it kind of feels down in there, so it's a little rough. So, you know, it, it looks like it is going to take three coats, but just like normal, I'm out of time and I got to get this edited and upload it. Uh, 10 inches across, three and a half inches tall. Really, really love that burgundy color. Uh, again, I don't know why there's a separation with the black and the lighter burgundy color below it. I can't explain it. <laughs> but that typically happens when pieces of wood are sandwiched between two of those plastic bowls. This is the second time that we've seen this now. So I like it. I think it's kind of cool. It looks like it's a double pour, but it's not. It really isn't. So anyway, I'll put another coat on this and then it would be ready to go and this piece is sold if you're curious. So um, it's a beauty. Hopefully the owner really, really likes it. Uh, did I show you the very bottom? Can't remember now. A little hard to read, it's quite busy. Still needs two more coats of finish on the very bottom anyway. All right, well that's it. Uh, this is the last video uh, that we will draw names from for the 40,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. So please leave a comment down below. And of course we will do that video next week. And I'm not gonna give it away as to what it is, but I guess it's gonna be a bowl, but it's gonna be something different than, than what we've done before. So make sure you come on back for that. Right, well that's it. Don't forget about our sponsors down below. If you need anything, all your discount codes are in the description down below. And uh, so check them out. And if you need some stuff, you know, put some money back in your pocket by using my discount codes. All right, well that's it. Till next week, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell and please share with your friends. See you next week.